and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. I know what you're thinking. Where the hell have I been for the last three weeks? Where are the map updates? Well, they've been a bit slow, but this week, it is a monumental week. So many updates to get through. So you know the drill. Sit back for 10 minutes, slap code Adamaru in the Fortnite shop, and let's break down the recent updates to Fortnite Chapter 2. <laughs> Without a doubt, the most important update is the new snowy map. I know what you're thinking. Snow way! Well, yes way. It feels all Christmassy, unless, unless you're in Australia, of course. But this year, the snow doesn't cover the entire map. And the husks and fiends which ruined last year are thankfully not here either, so yippee. This time we have a partially covered map rolling through the mountains and the higher areas. The first thing I had to check is Graham the Gnome. At the radio station in the north of the island, Graham has always watched over us. And now the snow has hit, will he still be here? Yeah! Thanks for all your hard work, Graham. You're the best gnome ever. Okay, I'll be serious, I'm sorry. Let's start with the snow update. The biggest thing comes over at the docks, where one of the warehouses has changed completely. This place is now an ice factory, and the detail is staggering. The ice blocks, the machinery. This is a hefty update which looks fantastic and could confirm the return of frozen rivers and lakes later in the season. Whilst here though, notice that the ice bins are searchable, and inside I found coal. And guess what, it's a throwable weapon here in Fortnite, just like in real life. Sorry YouTube, I am not telling people to throw coal at each other, my apologies. In game the damage isn't great, but we do this for the memes. I also found the snowball launcher here, confirming that Mayhem is here for the festive season. The former update to the docks has now gone. There are no more reindeer llama here, which means they must be somewhere else on the island. Well, we didn't have to look far, just up the road north to Retail Row. The snow has covered this area as it's so close to the mountain range. There isn't the Christmas tree in the main cordoned area just yet, but one update has arrived. The seasonal shop has opened its doors. Inside we have the first Christmas trees of the year and presents to ransack too. Extra points for the llama toppers. Genius work. And yes, those llama that we couldn't find at the docks are in here now. I got to admit, I do love this store update. The standard out of use version then became the Halloween edition and now it's the Christmas themed shop. It just worked, doesn't it? GG devs. Whilst here, I found the snowman item. It's back once again. It's still ridiculous, but it wouldn't be Christmas without it. Here's a snowman sitting on a chair. Looks like he's got issues. <laughs> It's officially Christmas now. The Christmas update though has changed things slightly. Check out what happens when you destroy one of the snow dudes. It becomes a boulder of ice. We can launch it at friends and enemies. In addition to damage, it also forces the ice feet mechanic, you know, where you slide around. So I wondered if it was possible to play the Olympic sport of curling with chairs. And hell yes it is. So Discord family, I call out to you guys. Let's play this sometime. Let's play Fortnite curling with chairs if you have the emote anyway. The winner will get the last minty pickaxe code I have. As we are so close to the bunker, before we leave this area, we should do this. Each week I sit down and think about the importance of the bunker and this week, it's a huge week. Have you ever looked at the Ego logo in depth? Well, rotate that bug around and look. It's an image of this very bunker. This place really is the most important spot on the island. I have a story theory to go here, but, but as this week's update is so huge, I'll wait until after the Star Wars event to upload it. But it's worth it, I promise. More Bunker Watch next week. Speaking of Star Wars though, the event this Saturday. Take a look at Risky Reels right now. The Star Wars celebrations are almost complete. But look at this. What the heck could this mean? We have four plinths facing a large central stage. Could we be voting for something? Or maybe four characters will appear here. I can't wait to find out this Saturday. If I had to guess, I'd say there will be presenters on the smallest stages and maybe art from the movie or a scene from the movie on the huge circle projector. Man, I'm so hyped. Here's a question for you. Do you like Star Wars? And has Fortnite's involvement in that franchise made you less or more hyped? For me, I am definitely so much more hyped. 
But let's quickly backtrack here and see what actually happened to Risky over the last week or two. Well, over a month ago, the first signs were present. Check this out. When gliding in four weeks ago, the demolition vehicles were already here. Did you spot it? Well, look again. Yeah, the magnetic truck thing was there all along, hidden in plain sight until we got too close. This was followed up with screen tests at Risky, and if you were lucky enough, you got to see the Llama screen, but things then escalated. Seven days ago, the trucks moved in, beginning to move all the vehicles. This is because, in Fortnite, vehicles don't do anything. They don't move, they just stay completely still. Maybe one day, they will function. But at the minute, they're just decorational. So over the next four days, the cleanup continued, with the camper vans and cars all being shifted out of the way. And look at it now. I also love how the light can be seen from anywhere on the island. So epic. If you've been living under a rock, check out the Star Wars posters around the island for your time zone of the event. Fellow stormtroopers, I look forward to sharing this experience with you. See you on Saturday. Depending when you played this week, something else happened here. Did you see this? I wasn't there to see it, but my friend Manchild, yes, that, that's his name, he's called Manchild, sent these clips over. A live test of the microphones can be heard. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Here's Wildcatter's 78 experience of the sort of mini test event. By the sounds of it, four different mic checks were there, and it was also possible to spot these four characters testing emotes, character load times, and other live event shenanigans. For certain, this will feed into this weekend's Star Wars event, but I found this so cool that the tests were made in completely open public service. GG if you managed to see this. You crazy mother With all this good stuff going down, we should really jump back in time. About three weeks ago, there was a small change to the island, but we haven't covered it in this series, so we will now. During week seven, signs were added around the map to help traffic get their bearings. We have the farm, the suburbs, the swampland, and even the beach gets a nod. Everyone loves the beach, even in winter. I think that's because we're all sons of beaches. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I do these things. I can't help myself sometimes. Anyway, whilst I was searching for these this week, a brand new location popped up just outside Misty Meadows. And as a side point, Misty actually looks just like Happy Hamlet now. Oh, it's so beautiful. Before I get sidetracked by chapter one nostalgia, up in the mountains is a chalet, but this place is a dance haven in the snow. Take a look inside. We have a central bar with seating and a dance floor, but there's also room for a DJ, possibly to play some terrible Christmas music, which we all love. Or hate. Or love to hate. You, you, get, you get the idea. And there's also a VIP section just for me and you. Don't tell anyone else. <laughs> Here's something quite interesting to add to this No, In Playground, we have these portals to quickly navigate around the island, but look at them more closely. Each of them has snow, which isn't in the game right now. So this almost certainly confirms that more snow will be arriving as the season continues. So if you're dreaming of a white Christmas, you may get one in a digital sense. <laughs> And yet another location has popped up in the snow. Check out this palace. Hidden away in the mountains is a hotel completely made of ice. These exist in real life, by the way, too. It looks like it's advertising a new bundle, all ice themed, but as a new location, this looks so good. So you definitely need to check it out. It's just next to the bunker if you are interested at all. Potentially something horrible is going to happen, just like in season seven or is it season six, where the ice block made its way towards the island. If you look around the island right now, it's possible to spot one or two of these. Let's hope that it's not bringing those husks again. I'm getting PTSD just thinking about it. We will see what happens. Could that bring the rest of the snow to the island? We shall see. And one last smash of nostalgia for all you OG players. Remember Granny's house from season seven of chapter one? Well, it's back and it's beautiful. The house can be found south of the farm and round the crimbo tree is potentially three chesticles to get your hands on. It's secluded too, so this actually may be a great landing area for non-sweats. Let me know if you try it, please. And to end all this, depending on your game mode and the platform you are on, it's possible to spot Aurora Borealis in the sky, <laughs> the Northern Lights. Nice, a very nice touch. <laughs> 
there we have it. Week 9, everything you need to know about it. What a good week this is. Of course, I will have missed something, so please let me know if you spot something that I didn't. My DMs are always open, and my Twitter is at Adam Grenade. As always, here's the Legends roll call for those people who are lovely enough to use my code, Adamaru, in the Fortnite shop. If you don't see your name, please keep in mind I can't tell who uses my code. That's why I keep my DMs open, so you can tweet me some proof and get in a video. Oh, and also the rules of the creator code have changed, so here's more transparency. When you use code Adamaru to buy something, I get a tiny proportion of the money from the sale. It isn't much, but if lots of people use it, it adds up. So if you see the hashtag Epic Partner, it means that. Okie dokie, every day is a school day. Thanks for your time. If you've made it this far, let's do something weird. What's the most ridiculous Fortnite crossover you can think of? I'll go first. Fortnite cross Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Damn it, I would buy all those skins if that happened. I'm so sad. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. You're awesome. Remember that. Have a good Christmas. I'll see you soon.